Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a 2022 variation on a model originally launched in 2019. This is the Patek Philippe 5172G010, still white gold, still 41 millimeters in diameter, now with an exquisite salmon dial. So 41 millimeters is the diameter. 11.8 millimeters is the thickness from lug tip to lug tip. It's a fairly large watch. 49.3 millimeters with a traditional and versatile 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and it's definitely grown larger compared to the old 5170. This is a watch I'd recommend for a wrist no smaller than 15 centimeters circumference. It is quite flat, though, with a dramatically stepped, and I should say multiply tiered case flank, so it will slide underneath the cuff. Just be careful. If your wrist is smaller than 15 centimeters, you're probably going to get some lug overlap at the edges. I'm right out to the limit here on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, though I would absolutely wear this. It is a good fit for my wrist size. It's just getting to the limit. The strap is large rectangular scale alligator leather, a very symmetrical set of large rectangular scales, speaking to a high quality and expensive cut of gator skin. You can see there's a monotone stitch, there's a folded edge, calfskin on the bottom, a brand new Patek Philippe factory strap, equipped with Patek's long running pull tab spring bars. You can pull the tab, pop the strap off the case without a tool, and the watch is matched with a single fold polished white gold Patek Philippe deployant and you can see the Calatrava cross on the buckle that is the symbol of the company. Patek uses gray gold which is the better kind of white gold. It's used by JLC, by Rolex, by Grubel Forsey and many others. It's the white gold that's white all the way through, 18 karat and never requiring any kind of rhodium plating, which is why this is a little bit darker and warmer in tone than say a rhodium plated white gold. The case shape is spectacular, but let's work from the outside in. Conventional crown, Calatrava cross, pressed down crown, 30 meter water resistant case. The pushers for the chronograph that's where things get interesting. You could see it has the rounded and fluted profile of the Tasti Tondi pushers on the old vintage reference 1463. And then if you look at the lug profiles, those are definitely drawn from the vintage reference 2405. We have a lovely stepped mid case that breaks up the shear of the profile. It actually necks in on the back and it steps up twice before butting an almost vintage inspired domed sapphire. Its cambered profile gives it a little bit of the look of a vintage plexi. You could see that the crown has been somewhat countersunk into the case flank so it doesn't stick out unreasonably. And then the dial. It's got a nice opaline profile, as Patek would call it. It's a very subtle, a non-directionally grained frosting. That means the dial glows more than shines. A sunburst would shine. This really glows softly. We have white gold syringe style hour and minute hands, a counterweighted lancet style chronograph seconds hand. We have leaf or foy style chronograph minute and constant seconds hands. And then we have lovely blackened white gold indices and numerals. Let's do a quick loom shot because though this is a dress watch, it is quite well loomed for a dress watch. Now my favorite here is that all of these elements, the hands and the numerals, they are blackened white gold. So they're not conventional polish. They show better against the salmon base as a result. There's a tachymeter, which is inboard on the dial in the fashion of a vintage watch. Base 1000, this can be used for gauging the speed of an object. For example, a car over a kilometer is the most intuitive and easy way since this is base 1000. Now you'll see as the chronograph seconds hand approaches 12, this is a semi-instantaneous jumping system. So an upscale and very, very precise. Uh, in the blink of an eye, it jumps. So turning it all over, you can see what actually underpins that mechanism. There's actually a little pawl and a pawl wheel that releases and snaps once a minute. This is Patek Philippe manufactured caliber 29535 PS for Petite Seconde. It is, among other things, a truly modern Patek movement, which includes the still somewhat novel presence of hacking seconds on a Patek caliber. It's adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer, and it features a Patek Gyromax style free-sprung balance for shock resistance and stability. The balance beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 
And it actually uses a metal overcoil hairspring shaped by hand to keep excellent time in all of those six tested positions. More upscale chronographs at Patek use a overcoil made of metal and they use a lateral clutch. The more mass produced watches use a silicon hairspring and a vertical clutch. Now the reason the upscale watches use the overcoil and the vertical clutch is because they require more hand adjustment. So more advanced watchmakers at Patek are responsible for building and tuning these mechanisms. We have here a lateral clutch in steel. You can see like all the steel chronograph parts, the levers, the horns, the clutch itself, the recentering hammers, satinated across the top and then mirror beveled on the edges. So even the steel parts feature a mirror bevel. That outward point where two bevels meet is particularly impressive in its execution. We have a traditional column wheel capped in Geneva fashion, capped and black polished. The column wheel feel here is best in the industry. Some may match, none can surpass. It is a manual wind movement. The pivot's on 33 joules, and it has a 65-hour power reserve. You could see that the bridges, though there are a few of them, Rhodium plated brass with Cote de Genève across their top. There's engine turning on the base plate. All screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference, and all train wheels have been satinated. You could see that every element is beautifully decorated, and if you are a Longa super fan, this will have you second guessing whether German watch finish truly is more intricate and beautiful, because this is as good as it gets. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.